Bubble sort is pretty simple, but it is also considered to be inefficient. We start at the first index, we look at the value, and if it is greater than the value to the right, we swap the values. We go to the next index, if the value is greater than the one to the right, we swap the values. As the greater values walk to the right, a sorted partition bubbles up from the back end. In this example, we are using three local variables, n, i, and j. n and i are acting to set the amount of iterations, and j is representing where we are working at in the array. Let's have a look at it in action. As per usual, we need to set up so we can work with the algorithm at runtime.
Okay, so I hope you're able to follow along with that. If you need a walkthrough on what we just did, go take a look at the introductory and setup video that we did for the series and the video for insertion sort. All right, so let's go ahead and add a function, bubble sort. We are going to use the last index a couple of times, so let's go ahead and set it to a local variable, n. Next, we are going to add a for loop and create a local variable i and set it to zero. Thinking ahead in our code, when j is set to the last value, and then when we try to check for j plus one, if j plus one is not part of the array, then we will get back an error. So for this reason, we are going to have the for loop iterate to the last index minus one. We are going to add another for loop and a local variable j set to zero. What's interesting is the condition for how many iterations this for loop will go through. It starts off the same way as the first for loop, but we will also be subtracting i from it. Right here on the minus node, just go ahead and click add pen and plug in i. The behavior that this creates is that it will decrement the amount of iteration that this for loop needs to go through each time this for loop iterates. This is how we get the effect of creating a partition on the right side. Add a branch. If the value in the array at j is greater than the value in the array at j plus one, do this. if this value is greater than this value. If that condition is true, then we swap the values. And that is the bubble sort algorithm in Blueprints. Let's go ahead and hook this thing up in our widget. Select the sort button, get the on clicked event, get the bubble sort reference, search bubble sort. Compile, save, and let's run it. Enter some numbers. Now let's sort it. And there it is sorted. While bubble sort is pretty simple, if you consider the amount of steps that it has to perform, it is considered to be inefficient. But it could be done much worse. Down here is a copy of the same code as above, except for we're not using the i variable. In the first version, this condition makes it so that j only has to do work on the unsorted partition of the array. But in this version down here, j has to go back and recheck the conditions on parts of the array that have already been sorted. 